What's happening, everybody? On today's show, LSU baseball defeats Florida in the championship final out in Omaha. We've got some SEC recruiting news and basketball news. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network covering your team every day. Well, it was quite a night out in Omaha as LSU blew out the Florida Gators in a winner-take-all championship game three in the Men's College World Series. It was a sea of purple and gold out there in Omaha as the Tigers held up the trophy. They had a chance to do this on Sunday, but, man, Florida really flipped the script, uh, beating them by 20 on Sunday to force a deciding game three. And we heard LSU was going to try to flush it and come back Monday ready to play, and they did just that. They handed the Gators basically the same treatment they gave them on Sunday and – you know, when you go back to the last time LSU was in this spot in 2017, uh, they lost to the Gators in the Men's College World Series then, and LSU avenged that loss just six years later. Jay Johnson, second-year head coach at LSU, became the first coach to win a title prior to his third season at an institution. LSU overcame a 2 nothing first-inning deficit by scoring six runs in the second inning, four runs in the fourth to take a commanding 10-2 lead. Braden Jobert led LSU with three runs, including a homer and three RBI. Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan also recorded three runs. And Dylan Cruz, the fourth Golden Spikes Award winner to win that honor and win the Men's College World Series. And the first time a player has done that since 1995. LSU notched 24 total hits compared to just five for Florida and Those 24 hits for LSU, the program's most hits in a College World Series game. 11 Tigers recorded at least one hit in the game. And, of course, LSU came into this season ranked number one in the country, stumbled a little bit on the backstretch of the season and in the SEC tournament, but they started the NCAA tournament as the number five seed. Tigers fell into the loser's bracket in the Men's College World Series, losing to Wake Forest, and they rebounded from a 24-4 to four finals loss on Sunday in Game 2. But ultimately, the LSU Tigers, they finished on top to raise the trophy. And LSU has now captured five national titles, 1991, 93, 96, 97, 2000. They did that all under Skip Bertman, and then they added a sixth when Paul Maneri did it in 2009 in just his third year. So we now had a seventh And LSU now the outright uh, college baseball champion uh, in outright in second place behind USC, who's got 12 all time. They were tied with Texas. The Longhorns have six, had six. LSU had six. And LSU now has seven to move into second place all time. Uh, It's in USC a little bit, but give them a little time here. Jay Johnson winning it all in year two. Man, does it feel like he is building a behemoth in this? Transfer portal is only going to help them, but just a few more notes on the game on Monday night. Five different LSU pitchers earned v- victories in the College World Series, including Paul Skeens, who, of course, was uh, the all-everything for them, the best pitcher in all of college baseball this year. Uh, Riley Cooper and Thatcher Hurd, they all picked up wins as well. First-time starter Nate, Nate Ackenhausen picked up a win, and freshman Griffin Herring picked up a win. LSU won 11 of their 13 games. In the NCAA tournament, they swept their regional and their super regional over Kentucky at Alec Box Stadium, and uh, they got it done on the biggest stage. Now, there were some moments uh, not so great. LSU catcher Alex Malazzo suffered a fractured shin when he was injured crossing home plate for a run in the middle of Game 3 Monday night. Uh, Malazzo immediately went down to the ground in pain, held onto his left ankle. He was quickly tended to by the LSU trainers and head coach Jay Johnson had to come out of the game. And 
Uh, kind of one of those highlight reels at the end when LSU went on the field to celebrate. Uh, it was Paul Skeens putting Alex Malazzo on his back and carrying him out to the dog pile to go and celebrate with their teammates. But what a year it was for LSU. What a career it was for a lot of these guys like Cade Beloso capping off their careers. And there's a couple of LSU guys that are going to make, go make a lot of money. Of course, we know Paul Skeens projected – to be the number one overall pick in the draft. And Dylan Cruz projected to be the number two pick in the in the MLB draft. So, uh, look, those guys, uh, they produced all year long, and they are going to go, like we said, make a lot of money. Now, there's going to be some Florida Gators that are going to make a lot of money as well. I think Kylie McDaniel, already ESPN, when you look at his latest mock draft, he has Skeens going number one overall to the Pirates. He has... Uh, Dylan Cruz going number two overall to the Washington Nationals. And then he's got Wyatt Langford, the left fielder from Florida, going number three overall to the Detroit Tigers. So uh, I can't remember the last time we had three college players go one, two, three in the MLB draft, but let alone three guys who all played against each other in the national championship, all from the SEC. Pretty cool stuff there. A few other notes. Uh, Rhett Lauder, the Wake Forest Stud pitcher that had that pitcher's duel with Paul Skeens just a week ago. They have him projected to go ninth overall. And a few other SEC guys, Jacob Gonzalez, the Ole Miss shortstop, projected to go top 10. Enrique Bradfield, Vanderbilt center fielder, expected to go, uh, projected to go 11th. And Chase Dolander, the right handed pitcher from Tennessee, projected to go 12th. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun when we get closer to the, uh, the MLB draft. We'll, we'll talk about some of the big SEC guys that. Uh, We'll hear their names called earlier, uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, Hurston Waldrop, the uh, pitcher from Florida, he should go in the first round. And, uh, man, what a night it was for LSU. And what a series it was. And, and look, Florida shouldn't hang their head, man. They gave it all they had. And, um, you know, look, they'll be right back there. They've, they've got some good pieces coming back, like Jack Aglione and others. So, uh, Florida – they hit the transfer portal, recruit well, as Kevin O'Sullivan does. They'll be right back in this picture again. But uh, for LSU, there's already some rumors out there. Or Chase Burns over at Tennessee may be eyeing transferring to LSU. So we'll see what Jay Johnson is able to do. But uh, for LSU fans, a championship celebration will be held Wednesday night at Alec Box Stadium. Details will come out more on that soon. So, again, congrats to, uh, to LSU. And now they have won a championship in women's basketball and men's baseball. It is the uh, they're the first school to do that, to win a baseball title and a basketball title in the same year. And that's a men's or women's basketball title. So uh, big thing there for LSU. Congrats to everybody in Tiger Nation. And I'm sure they are selling out of uh, all the remaining jello shots in Omaha. As we speak, thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we got to go around the conference with some recruiting tidbits. A lot of uh, recruiting happening and a lot of kids committing, so we'll get to that in just a second. But thank you guys so much for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. That is coming your way in just a sec. The first want to remind you guys, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing. And there's no better place to get in on all the action than at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book because right now new customers can get that no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I think I said that right. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to go sign up today and don't miss that chance to snag that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Very easy to go to the website, go sign up. And a, a quick reminder, FanDuel, they are the official partner of Major League Baseball. We're about to hit the All-Star break. Plenty of games still remaining this season. Plenty of action to get into. And FanDuel's got you covered. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. And MLB trademarks used with permission. along here locked on sec shout out to our everydayers making us their first listen every day a uh, quick reminder later in the week we are going to talk with 
Will Rogers, Mississippi State quarterback, as well as Tennessee quarterback Joe Milton, and Kentucky quarterback Devin Leary. Make sure you are tuned in all week long here on Locked on SEC, bringing you some of those interviews we got at the Manning Passing Academy. You do not want to miss it. All right, we got plenty to jump into. Let's dive right into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And we run through some football recruiting news as David – Busey, I think is how you'd say it, B-U-C-E-Y. He has committed to the South Carolina Gamecocks. He did so on social media on Monday. He's six foot one, 200 pounds, a three-star linebacker out of the state of Georgia. And Shane Beamer and company, uh, they may be thinking putting him somewhere else. South Carolina DB's coach, Torian Gray, was leading his recruitment. So did they envision him more as a DB? We will find out, but... BC had offers from a ton of different schools, including West Virginia, Iowa State. But he now gives the Gamecocks 13 commitments in their class of 2024. Meanwhile, over at Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher adding to his 2024 class, picking up lineman Weston Davis. He is uh, from the Beaumont area in Texas, committed to the Aggies on Monday, 6'5", 275 pounds. He is rated four stars, the number 15 offensive tackle, and the number 35 recruit from the state of Texas, also rated number 187 overall. That's a big-time get there for the Aggies for their class of 2024. Uh, prior to a visit with AM for their spring game, Davis had named the Aggies in his top six schools, which included Alabama, Oklahoma, LSU. And with his signing, a and now has 11 commitments in their 2024 recruiting class, but I'm sure they will keep adding to that very, very soon. Over at Ole Miss, Shamar Darden, a three-star safety out of the Tupelo area. He is staying in state. He announced his commitment to Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. He's six foot one, 165 pounds. Had offers from Austin P, UTSA, Southern Miss. Uh, Ole Miss was reportedly his lone Power 5 offer, but it gives Ole Miss their 16th commitment in this class, fifth commitment in the Rebels' secondary in the class of 2024. And we know Pete Golding made it a point, a uh, point of emphasis to focus on building that defense up. Uh, Shamar Darden is the number 96 safety in the country, number 26 player out of the state of Mississippi. Over at Mississippi State, Zach Arnett getting another kid in state to stay in state. Tyler Carter, Vicks- Vicksburg uh, native, edge defender, Staying in state, going to Mississippi State. He announced his commitment on Monday on social media. Said, I want to thank God for giving me the ability to uh, play collegiate ball at the next level. Committed to working hard and giving my all in the field. That being said, I want to commit to Mississippi State University. Six foot six, 251 pounds, rated a three star, number 14 player out of the state of Mississippi, number 34 edge defender. 24 7 sports that gives mississippi state 15 commitments for 2024 so far uh aggies did get another commitment yesterday uh jacory barney uh a wide receiver six foot tall 160 pounds four star wide receiver number 35 athlete in the country number 62 uh recruit out of the state of florida he is committed to Texas A&M. And uh, so congrats to Ja'Cory Barney heading to College Station to play for the Aggies. They hosted him on a visit earlier this month. A few more here for you uh, over at Florida. They picked up another commitment in their class. Jare Hawkins, four-star wide receiver. Committed to Florida via social media. He's a native of Bradenton, Florida, uh, 5'9", 165 pounds, so a little bit smaller. He's number 35 wide receiver at his position in state. Uh, Gators currently have the second best 2024 class in the SEC with 17 total commitments so far. So a big-time pickup there for the Florida Gators, Jeray Hawkins, heading to Gainesville. Over Vanderbilt, Clark Lee. Picking up another piece as Martrice Dillard committed to Vanderbilt. He is a three-star defensive lineman, six foot four, 263 pounds. He had offers from the likes of Florida, Mississippi State, Auburn, and Missouri. 
in his announcement. He said, I want to thank my parents for always supporting me. With that being said, I've decided to further my education and football career under a place where I feel like I would not only have the best opportunity to chase my dreams in football, but also provide me with an excellent education for life after football. Certainly the case with Vanderbilt. He is the 16th commitment for Vanderbilt in their class of 2024. So congrats to um, Artrice Dillard, three-star defensive lineman, heading to Vanderbilt. And that is the latest going on recruiting-wise around the conference. When we return, we will dive into some basketball nuggets. SEC making an announcement on Monday regarding SEC basketball uh, moving forward into next season. So we'll get to that in just a second. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. More in just a sec. along here, Locked On SEC. And before the break, we were talking about uh, SEC basketball, some news coming out there. So let's uh, dive right back into it as SEC basketball working on their schedule for the 2023-2024 season. And the league announced the team opponents for the SEC schedule slate in 2024. According to the release, conference play will begin January 6th. 2024 will run through March 9th. Uh, I think a year's past, we've had a couple teams that maybe started, you know, like right those last couple days of December or right on like January 2nd or 3rd or something like that. So January 6th, that's when SEC play will start. Each team will play all 13 opponents at least once and three permanent opponents a second time. The SEC tournament will, of course, follow in March at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. But just kind of looking at, some of the games of the slate out there and some of the games that stand out uh, that should be fun ones. Alabama, of course, they get the home games against Arkansas and Auburn and LSU and a lot of the SEC West. But how about Alabama hosting Tennessee? That'll be a fun one. Uh, Alabama's got to go on the road to Kentucky. That'll be fun. Arkansas has got to go on the road to Kentucky. Auburn will have uh, – they will play at Ole Miss at Mississippi State. They'll get home games against uh, Kentucky and uh, Texas A&M. Uh, Florida, they will have to, of course, play uh, Kentucky twice at home and on the road. Georgia, they will get uh, home games against Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, LSU, Ole Miss, a lot of teams in on the western side. Uh, for LSU, they will get a home game against Kentucky. I know I'm bringing up Kentucky a lot, but that's just kind of the one everybody looks at and we know they're bringing in all this, this stud-loaded recruiting class with all the five stars. So that's just going to be the one that everybody's going to want to watch. Of course, Arkansas and Alabama seem to be reloading as well, and they will have some uh, a great arsenal. Missouri, they will have to play road games at LSU, at Ole Miss, uh, of course, at Alabama, at Arkansas. So it will be tough for Mizzou. Uh, Tennessee, they will go at uh, Mississippi State, at Alabama, at Arkansas, they will host LSU. And uh, Texas A&M, they get Kentucky at home. Don't have to take them on the road. So a good draw there for A&M. And uh, just for good measure, Vanderbilt, they get a uh, road game at LSU, at Auburn, at Arkansas, at Mississippi State. And, of course, uh, you know, get Tennessee twice in there as well. So, those are just some of the games highlighting uh, the, the conference schedule. A lot of people like to kind of look and see, all right, well, we make a road trip here or there. There's some really good ones, some good ones to take advantage of. And, of course, this is the last year, you know, we're going to play a slate like this. We're going to have Texas and Oklahoma coming in next summer. And the, uh, as you know, as already has been discussed, the conference schedule is going to change drastically heading into 2024. So enjoy it. Last year of – SEC East, SEC West, basketball standings as we know it, 14 teams, and this will all change next year. Now, there was one other basketball nugget before we get out of here. Javon Quinterly of Alabama announced Sunday evening that he will be entering the transfer portal. He spent the last three years with the Tide. This upcoming year will be his last year in college hoops. The announcement comes after he previously announced that he was going to stay at Alabama for another season. So Javon Quinterly 
deciding to move on. Uh, Crimson Tide are bringing back Mark Sears and got a transfer commitment from former Hofstra standout Aaron Estrada. Uh, but it's a big loss. Quinterly averaged close to nine points, close to two rebounds, three and a half assists per game last year. He's a former five-star, started his career at Villanova. Came to Tuscaloosa in 2020, and, man, he's had a nice run there at Alabama. But the Tide now have lost a good bit of their team from last year. You lose Brandon Miller, Noah Clowney, Jaden Bradley, Charles Bediaco, and now uh, Javon Cornerly. Those are some big, big losses. So Nate Oates and company going to have to retool, rebuild. And, of course, they're doing good on the recruiting trail. They'll bring in some new pieces. But, uh, again, just kind of a late uh, – Late news dump there as a kid who announced previously he was coming back to Alabama is now hitting the portal and will be on the move. Will they go to another SEC school? We'll see. And uh, certainly that will add for more dramatic headlines down the road. That is just about going to do it for this edition of Locked On SEC. A little abbreviated edition, but I want to make sure we got in the uh, LSU Florida College World Series final news and then uh, some recruiting nuggets as well. Make sure you guys are subscribed and checking us out. Every day right here on Locked on SEC, we'll be bringing you, like we talked about, some of those great interviews with some of those SEC quarterbacks later in the week. You'll hear from Will Rogers. You'll hear from uh, Mike Wright's going to join us next week. You'll hear from uh, Joe Milton, Devin Leary, Jaden Daniels. So make sure you subscribe to Locked on SEC, and we'll bring you some of that stuff over the next couple of days. But for now, you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow right back here on Locked on SEC. Have a good day.